Welcome to Franchising Stronger Together. I'm your host, Red Boswell, president of the International Franchise Professionals Group, IFPG, and we are joined today by a great leader, a great friend in franchising, Michaela Seeger. Michaela is VP of Franchise Development. I might have messed that up. We'll get her to correct me. Of Naturals to Go. Michaela, welcome to the call. Hey, thanks, Red. Good to be on. And no, you got it right. I, but I answer to anything, you know, whatever you need. Hey, I'm here to help. Well, you're in a, you got a beautiful background there. <laughs> yeah, that's the, the Beartooth Mountains. That's, uh, I actually took that picture. It's not too far from me. So we get to enjoy that country quite often. Gorgeous. Oh. Well, um, Michaela, you are in Billings, Montana? Yeah, in the area. Our company's out of Idaho Falls, Idaho, but I work out of my home in Billings, as does most of our team members work out of their homes. So we're across the U.S., but I'm fortunate to be able to work out of my home here in uh, Billings. Nice. What a blessing. Well, before we jump into how your, your organization's been impacted, how you responded, how about you and the family? You've got a big family out there because we're good friends on Facebook and I follow. <laughs> I think you might even be a, is it okay to say, are you a great grandmother? I'm a great grandmother. I am. I have one little granddaughter. She just turned seven in February, but I have uh, 17 grandkids and five children. And uh, so we're busy. Um, so yeah, you know, we're all fine. I think we have a little different perspective. I have, my husband and I have three sons that are physicians and um, that two of them are married to physicians. So they've been right in the kind of the hot spot of dealing with this. Um, so we've done a lot of praying, you know, cause uh, um, our son in Denver has been on the COVID team is actually on the COVID team this week. So his family has relocated to stay with her, my daughter-in-law's mother during this time because she has asthma and some things. So my, one of my sons has been very involved in developing the, the PPE, the um, personal protective equipment. And then um, my other son here in Billings, he's very involved in the region of the, uh, and working with all the hospitals and making sure they're So we feel like we've had kind of a front seat to um, the medical side of it. Um, my husband has some medical issues, so we've been quarantined, but it's been fine because we've just dug in and done a lot of gardening and cleaning and enjoying and uh, a lot of Zoom calls. Uh, we should have all invested in Zoom a month ago, right? So, um, so yeah, we've we've been a little concerned, but you know, um, we're glad that they did flatten this curve, and we're starting to come out of this. And I think it's going to be okay. And I think there's been some positive things that have happened too. So, well, great to hear. Looking forward to seeing you when, when me and the family get up to Yellowstone here later this summer. So, right, that'd be great. Well, when when we talked uh, last week about this, we communicated. You were saying you had some pretty interesting things to share. Now, before we really dive into that, a lot of folks don't know who Naturals to Go is. Could, could you explain who the company is, kind of the size and scope of what you do? Yeah, you know, we've been, the company's, our company is Ventec International, but our main brand is Naturals to Go, which is a healthy vending concept. And, you know, we really use the term automated retail, which in these times has really become even more apparent. We'll talk a little bit about that. But um, Naturals Go has been around, was developed 10 years ago, really to uh, take advantage of technology and um, in helping people buy better options in the workplace, in the environment where they want to have access to snacks and things um, throughout their day. The, the program has grown. Uh, we've been involved with the broker group since uh, very early on. Uh, we love working with the brokers just because they bring us such good candidates. But it's really a good brand for people who are looking for flexibility. That's what it really boils down, somebody that really needs flexibility. So to have a number of machines, so we provide a turnkey program. We're much like a franchise, but we are a business opportunity. So um, you don't require the territory checks and some of those things. But as a business opportunity, we really are structured much like a franchise with all the support, the training. Big piece of it is we get the locations for our operators. Um, and so it's really a turnkey program that can be up and started fairly quickly. So it's been very popular. It's been very popular with those people who are looking for, like I said, that flexibility, something that needs, um, once that side gig or full time, uh, it can really work well for them. And how many licensees do you have? Um, that, that would be a good question right now. I think we're close to, um, over the last 10 years, about 700. Okay. Um, and most have somewhere between six and 20 machines. Uh, we have some that are larger. Um, but this really is a business people can start and scale, but they can really start it and just have a nice little side income. It's a great family business. And, um, uh, you know, and we see all walks of life from the millennials to 
retired age and everything in between. Gotcha. So your food, your food base, food related, that in, right. that part of the uh, franchising or business opportunities has gotten hit pretty hard, but you're also on the vending side too. So help us understand how did it impact you? You know, you know, a lot of, as we find locations, we always kind of promote that they get a balance of types of locations. You know, the number one place to put a vending machine is in a break room of a business. So in those situations where businesses were still operating for essential businesses, those locations, we actually saw sales increase dramatically because people weren't coming to work and leaving to go get something for lunch or things they were staying there. So we saw a lot of locations increase sales dramatically. But then some of our uh, operators have schools. So of course those got shut down. But I'll tell you one quick story. I, had a, I have a gal, a customer of ours that um, has um, 10 machines and she had four schools and those all shut down. But she also had four locations that were considered essential businesses where people came and stayed and those uh, tripled in sales. So she actually increased sales during that time. So it really turned out to be kind of a balance across the board. I'll tell you one other quick story that, you know, one of those things we didn't expect was care centers, retirement centers. You know, those really got locked down and, you know, became very serious. But one of the things we discovered out of that is when people come visit their elderly relatives, they bring snacks, right? Well, if they're not coming to bring in snacks, there became a big void there. And so we actually had some um, care centers call and contact us. And we had a number of operators who were able to put, place machines in care centers where those took off because they weren't having those snacks and things that their relatives were bringing when they came and saw them. So it was great because they could fill the machines in the evenings when, you know, when the patients weren't around and there was no concern about health and that. So we had a number of, so that was kind of an interesting take that you, we didn't expect. So um, I think there's been some positives that came out of this. And then of course, you know, like I said, with schools and some businesses, but we don't feel like we were affected with the food side of this because people are more apt to buy out of something where they do, didn't have the interaction with somebody where they could totally have the uh, interaction with the machine and, and not be concerned about that. And a lot of our operators have put masks and, and um, uh, sanitizer in their machines and really been able to capitalize on that as well. So we've seen a real um, increase in some real positive things come out. What about your supply chain? Has that been impacted? Are your franchisees able to get the products to put in the machines? You know, I think there's been some little bit of concern with that, but nothing raised to the to where they were real concerned. I mean, initially, like that they wanted to put in sanitizer and it took them a while to find that supply. But once that was, um, but yeah, uh, what we are did here is that they weren't able to buy as much. They maybe had some limitations. And so they maybe had to go back and pick things up over more often than maybe the once a week that they normally would. Well, it sure is nice to actually have places call you wanting, I mean, wanting <laughs> your machines. That's a reverse of the, the norm. Yeah, you know, there's always good comes out of everything. And we've said that too, that we were fortunate for that, that, you know, our business it was ruled as essential. Uh, vending was ruled as an essential business. So many of our operators continued, you know, a, as much as ever and, and really didn't see. Um, I'll tell you one thing, you know, again, I mentioned schools. Uh, we had a couple of operators that had a number of schools. So what they did is they knew the schools were going to be closed down. They went and took the products out of the school and then went and donated that to the food bank. So that was a positive too, you know. So like I said, good comes out of everything. It sure does. And do you see those franchisees, uh, the machines that were requested during the, uh, a big need, I imagine they're just going to leave them there, right? They're going to stay there and it's a new income stream. Yeah, we believe so because, you know, one of the things we know is we're creatures of habit. And once the people get used to using the machines, they're going to want to continue to use them, you know. So yeah. um, we see that to be able to continue. Yeah, so as a well, market, we, yeah, good, good option. What, how has life and daily activity changed for the franchisor? Are you communicating more often or in a different way? I mean, everybody's talking Zoom and these different Microsoft Teams type environments. You know, because we utilize so many of our operators as business coaches to our new operators, um, that even became more prevalent where more people jumped in. And, you know, we have a, a, our operator Facebook page and I am able to view that on a regular basis. And people jumped in with suggestions and ideas. So like the care centers, when that came up, you know, they put that out there. Hey, reach out to your local care center. They may need something. So there was a lot more communication. And we certainly, as a company, uh, jumped in and, and uh, on the fulfillment side, really communicated with our operators, what can we do to help? 
And obviously um, some operators, um, you know, we worked with them if they had loans or something like that and they needed to get some deferment or something like that. So we feel like our operators have really fared really well. I have not taken the hit of so many businesses, which is really heartbreaking to see with so many businesses, but we feel pretty fortunate that our operators have not had that big no, hit because you, of the industry. And it sounds like operator is another word for franchisee in our world, right? So right. your operators, are they typically dedicated to just natural to go or is this a side gig? Is, how does, are, do they have other income streams they're able to rely on? You know, what we heard is, uh, I would say we've got about 20% who are, have you know, quit the corporate world and jumped into this full time. But the rest of them are, it's a side business or it's a retirement business or it's just a, an extra stream of income. And um, what we saw with that and what we heard is from so many, we're so grateful for this, is that we heard from people saying, you know, I'm so blessed that I made this decision when I did because I didn't, if I lost my job, I still had money coming in. And so we're hearing that a lot. So we've been, our operators have been very blessed to have that income. And most of them have it continuing and very few have suffered, uh, you know, to the length of you've seen a lot of the food industry. So we feel very fortunate with that. So no doubt some of you with 700 plus operators, you've had some lose their job. I would think, and heck, the ones that didn't lose their job, they're working from home going, I could take this for a long time. I don't need to right. go back to that, right. you know, septic tank that I work at. That, that's, I've been hearing that sort of message often. And of course, the uh, the interest in franchising and in business opportunities has picked up because people are getting a little taste of some freedom and some working from home. I would think your current operators that have had those situations occur where they've been furloughed, they've been laid off, or maybe they're just uh, long term from home. They're going, man, if I had about 12 more units, uh, I, could, I could quit this job. I mean, are you seeing are some seeing of that? that? We are seeing some of that. We are seeing people come back and, and expanding and having more opportunities. Um, you know, we have needed to pivot a little bit in terms of our locating process because what we're obviously focusing on is uh, the locations that are essential so that that stream of income can continue. But go back to your point. Yeah, people are looking that, yeah, I need to, um, I think what we're hearing is that they're grateful that they have the side income. They're grateful that they were able to do it when they did. And they are looking to expand uh, because nobody wants to be caught in this situation again where you have, you know, your money just completely shut down if you have a job and get furloughed. I mean, that's got to be scary. I mean, I'm fortunate that I wasn't in that position. We've been just as busy as ever, you know, so it's, it's a, been, a, we're, we're the, of the group that really can't complain with what's happened. Yeah, absolutely so, been protected. Well, what about the, uh, you don't call it franchise development. <laughs> what do you call it? Well, we, yeah, we, we call them go, those that are looking, going through the process, you know, that are, we're working with. Certainly when this first hit, we had a lot of people put the brakes on because, you know, there was just such uncertainty. But in the last two weeks, we've seen most of those come back. But we have seen, I mean, again, we just count our blessings every day because we have seen an explosion of interest. Uh, we are as busy as ever with leads, people going through the process. Um, people moving forward, making the commitment, making the decision. And, you know, we're, um, you know, for example, we have a very uh, streamlined process for them to learn the process that they can get on and watch our online presentation. And our attendance to that on a daily basis has tripled. So we, we're seeing a lot of interest and we're seeing a lot of people, um, and, and also this SBA loan uh, to be able to take advantage of that and get your first six months um, you know, so we've got a lot of people in that process. I mean, that has exploded for us. The financing side has, is, I mean, we're busy with our financing side and a lot of people moving through the process and, and, uh, and as to your point saying, I don't want to just start with a few, I want to get into this, you know, so the sweet spot seems to be that 10 or 12 machine package to start up with, gotcha. um, for, to and give well, them that well, solid income. So I'm going to ask you what a machine costs, but before that, what, um, to me, there's two things that caused all these extra people to get on your, your uh, videos, your, your webinars. There's a lot of people at home. They got, they got time on their hands. They're, That's you know, true. Netflix or look at natural to go. Hey, let's take uh, 30 minutes and look at natural to go. Right. So that's a big part of it. But are you, have you changed your, the franchise or the, uh, the business opportunity parent company, <laughs> new terminology. Yeah. Here. Have you sure. changed your marketing to get more people on these calls? 
you know, what we've done is really said, hey, we're here to help. This is a good time that you might be able to learn. So this is the time to talk to us, you know, uh, and, and our whole approach is never to hurry somebody. It's really to educate them about the opportunity. So are and, these people that were already in the process, you already had their contact info, or is this all new leads that you, you say, you know what, everybody's at home, I'm going to double my Google AdWords spend. Is that what you're doing? No, we've done both. We've had uh, working more with brokers to get them information to help them uh, go out and reach out to their database. So I would say we've focused as much on our existing database and working with the brokers and their database. We, we did not increase our ad thing because we really focused on existing and saying, hey, here's a time. And then we also went out there and said, did some surveys, said, do you think now is a good time to get into a business? Or do you think now is a good time to get into vending? Or do you think it's time to get into food and the automated retail side of this? So we asked a lot of questions and, and offered then also that there's good financing options and really was about getting into people information and that you might be able to use this time worthwhile to determine if this may be a good fit for you. So that's how we've approached it. And we've been very successful at that. And uh, we've been pleasantly pleased with a lot of leads that have come back into the system. And then our, our relationship with brokers and working with them to uh, bring people out of their database um, into the system. And, and that's been, that has worked well for us. So, so everybody's wondering, what's a machine cost on average? Well, I always say we don't sell a machine. We have a business investment that includes a very key part, which is the locating, uh, the training, the support, uh, the product knowledge. Um, but I'll just throw out the, you know, a, a typical um, 10 machine package, all in, everything delivered, your freight, A to Z, is they're going to have about 110000 in that. Sounds so, like a franchise. And, and that's kind of, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah right. Yeah, it's a it spot is, yeah. for uh, investing. Fantastic. So, Michaela, um, this has been fascinating. You've got a really different message than so many franchisors out there. But, gosh, franchising and business opportunities are so diverse. We, uh, I mean, I, I can do this all day. I love learning about uh, different models and how it is fun, isn't in. it? Uh, yeah, it is yeah, fun. That's um, why I always like to see you when we went to when we run into each other at conferences because you learn so much. If you're there to learn, you can really benefit from that. So, oh yeah, it's free from a fire hose. New, this has become the new conference, right? <laughs> it has. We're conferencing every day. Um, yeah, sure. Well, you've had such a, a tenure of experience in this awesome world that we live in. Franchisors, business opportunity founders are listening, wondering what the future looks like and how to optimize their business for the future. Any advice you can share with them as we wrap up? You know, I've, I've thought of that, you know, when we talk about the different things and how to approach it. I just think the big thing is you have to be open to change and you have to be looking. I mean, you, if you look at history in down times and in tough times, there's so much opportunity if you look for the positive. So I, my advice is stay positive. We'll get through this. The economy is going to come back. Uh, people all in our business, people always eat. They're going to need to eat. They're going to need to snack. And um, we offer a great, and if you are in a business that you can offer a service and be responsible and reliable, um, I think you're going to end up fine. Is it challenging? Yeah, but you got at the end of the day, work through it and be open to change and how can I improve? And if you focus on the customer, so we focus on our customer and our customers focus on their customer, the money will come, it'll work out. So that's my advice is just stay positive and keep moving forward and be open to change and look for opportunity. There's lots of opportunity out there. There are, and usually that opportunity is found by our operators, our franchisees, and then Correct. we can learn from them, disseminate it to the rest of the group. What a great time to be in business ownership with a franchise organization or a business opportunity organization that supports you, uh, disseminates the best practices, guides you through getting the PPP loans and everything in between. I just love what we were able to do, changing lives and impacting communities. So, Ma Michaela, thank you so much for well, being on here. Thank you, and, and just a shout out to IFPG. I love that broker group. You know that. We always have a great time when we get together, and we always accomplish a lot, and that's about learning and how we can help people be successful in business, and that's our that should be all of our ultimate goal is success, and if that's what we focus on. It'll all be great. Well, the big IFPG retreat will be virtual this October, and then – we're going for the live one where we can actually give each other a big hug in January. So we're getting a two for okay. one. Yeah, uh, I know I'll see you in January, but love to get you uh, free uh, when you're in January. 
at the event free is our virtual event in October. So we'll be seeing okay, each other. I'll be looking for it. I'll be looking for it. But thanks, Red, for giving me the opportunity just to say hi to everybody that's out there. Uh, if we can be of any help, reach out to me. I'm always happy to help you with your candidates. Absolutely. Michaela Seeger with Naturals to Go, Red Basel with IPG. See you on the next episode of Franchising Stronger Together. Thanks again. Thanks, Red.